pleasant morning, my dear friends. Today, we hope to shed light on the communion of saints. We find it fitting to present it today as the Church celebrated the Feast of San Lorenzo Ruiz last week and prepares for the Feasts of St. Therese of Lisieux and St. Francis of Assisi this week. So come and join us. Let us refresh our understanding of the communion of saints. The communion of saints is a Catholic teaching about how the believers are one church because we share the same faith, celebrate the same sacraments, enjoy spiritual gifts, and live in charity. Communion of saints also teaches how we, the living, are one with the Christians who have gone ahead of us, those who may be enjoying the beatific vision already, and those who are in the state of purification. This second aspect is the focus of our catechesis today. Saints in this context refers to all Christians, tayo hong lahat, as we are made holy by our consecration to God in our baptism. This doctrine is based on the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians and affirmed by the vision of St. John in the book of Revelation. The communion of saints, simply put, is the spiritual union of all Christians, the living and the dead, because each Christian is part of the body of Christ that is the church. Each member contributes to the good of all and shares in the welfare of all, most especially through prayer and good works. The Pauline epistle reads, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Slaves are free, and all were made to drink of the one spirit. This communion ties three states of the Church, the Church militant, the Church triumphant, and the Church penitent or expectant. The Church militant comprises the living, all of us who are still on earth, still witnessing to our faith and striving to fight evil and to do what is pleasing to God. The Church triumphant comprises the ones who may now be enjoying the glory of heaven, these are the saints, or the people who followed Christ closely until their last hours on earth. The church penitent or expectant comprises the ones who are in purgatory or in the state of purification before finally being accepted into God's presence in heaven. Now you might ask, how are these three states of the church related to one another? My friends, like what we mentioned earlier, primarily through prayer. We who are still battling with evil and are still persevering to follow the ways of Christ, ask the prayers of those who are in heaven. We ask for their intercessions. We ask them to pray with us and to inspire us that like them, we may successfully finish our earthly course. In turn, we pray for our beloved dead and all the souls in purgatory so that they may be purified and may be made worthy to enter the happiness and the glory of heaven. So when they finally enter eternal bliss, they may also pray for us. John sees in a vision each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sang a new song. That is why we have these beautiful traditions of praying for the dead and the intercessions of the saints. But let me reiterate, we do not worship or adore the saints or hold them equal to God. We give them respect and ask them to pray for us and with us.
Brothers and sisters, this Sunday, please consider offering the Mass for our dearly departed ones because we love them and we want them to be among the holy people in heaven. Also, we continue to pray that the saints, most especially San Lorenzo Ruiz, Saint Therese of Lisieux, and Saint Francis of Assisi, may include us in their prayers as they praise God eternally. Till our next meeting, may the good Lord bless us all.